Welcome back to the plush welded design offices here at Unibike Labs, folks. Today, with the help of the good folks at PCB Way, we're going to continue our series with uh, modular design. Uh, if you recall the video that we did a little while back when we built up a, a minimal setup to use a pickaxe on a breadboard and use it to control the display module we had, had made. I'll leave a link to that uh, video up above and in the description. Well, we're going to use that same basic setup with just a few additional functions added as the basis design uh, a development board for pickaxe microcontrollers. And we'll use that going on with our, our series. It's going to have all the same features as this board here. And I think we've seen this one before too. But this one is going to be based on uh, all through hole components, you know, just to make it a bit easier for uh, beginners to assemble. Uh, this is this board here is board I had one time manufactured, but uh, you know, unfortunately, it's it's no longer available. Don't worry, folks. We're here to design a new version. Okay, so here's a look at the schematic. Let's go through the, each each of these sections. So each of these sections are actually. Can be considered modules. I've, I've used these circuits before in these formats. Uh, but let's like first we got over here, we got a, a power and reset module. And that's basically exactly the same power supply as you saw in that previous picture that we did on the breadboard. And it's just a, a 7805 with a couple of protection diodes and capacitors around it and uh, an input socket. So this one is set up, you use a nine volt wall wart or something of that nature and it'll provide you a nice regulated DC output. And the nice thing about the 7805 and this circuit here is that it'll remove most of the noise from that wall wart and uh, provide a nice clean supply for the, the board. And we've added on here a, a way to put 5 volts directly into it. If you have a, a power supply with 5 volts and you don't have a wall wart, you just select with a little jumper here. And the reset circuit is just uh, uses a PNP transistor here, in this case, a, a 2N907A, which is a very common, popular transistor. We had for a few pennies a piece, a resistor and a, and a switch, a push button switch. Now the way it's biased, it's, it's on all the time until the reset switch is pushed and then it cuts power going down to the pickaxe. And that is the preferred way to reset a pickaxe. Over here, the programming circuit, well, this again is, is pickaxe design. They designed this particular circuit for programming their chips. Now it's a very, very simple circuit here, but it's a well-proven circuit. So it's, an, it's, it's a known good module. And over here we have these low side transistor switches to switch on the LEDs. This is a uh, basic stuff. Everybody knows these and know they works, a power indicator resistor going through a, a, a an LED. And these two here turn on and off uh, activity lights, so they receive and transmit. And the reason we're using a little transistor to drive them rather than directly is because we don't want to load these circuits down at all. So we've got uh, a, you know fairly high gain transistors here, 2N2904s. And uh, we've got 330K resistors going into them. 2.2K down to the LED gives plenty enough illumination. So this, we call this our indicator module. And then here, the pickaxe socket and access module. I copied this cut and paste from a, a, another schematic that I have for the board that you just saw, that little red board. This is, a, again, another proven design. So this is what I mean by uh, modular design, is that you take proven little modules that you've used before, and their design is known, and then you just cut and paste them into your schematic. And that way you know, you, you, you basically know right away that you're going to get something that's going to work. You feel confident in firing off a circuit like this to a PCB way to get it made up into a PC board. And you can be assured that when it comes back, it's going to work because everything in it works. Before we go and look at what the board itself is going to look like, let's get a, a word from PCB way. Okay, here we are over at PCB way. What I'm going to do here is going into the quick order Okay, so then I can just click on add my Gerber files. So you just choose a file where you've zipped up all your Gerber files and your drill file and you open it up. So here we are, it's, it's decided that we have a two layer board and it's got the dimensions correctly. Now all we have to do is choose our options. You have a lot of different options here. It's a two layer board, but if you were to go in and just get a quote and you wanted a quote on a four layer version of the board, you can click on that and it'll change the prices up here accordingly. 
you can choose your material, the thickness of the board. 1.6 is fine, but you could put in a thinner board or a thicker board, depending on what your needs are. And of course, the prices will be updated accordingly. Um, we'll stick with the 1.6. This is not a very complicated board, so we don't need very, very fine track spacing and track width, but you can have even wider or you can have much, much narrower. Minimum hole size, again, if you require very, very, very small hole sizes, you can select that too. Three millimeters, pretty much the standard. What color do you want your board? So you choose a, a solder mask here to make the board whatever color you want. Uh, so pretty well when you do it, it, it's clever enough to notice exactly what it is would work best for you. So you can make little changes here if you want, uh, such as surface finish. The, the standard is hot air solder leveling with lead-based solder. Immersion gold is not too expensive, and I've done boards in immersion gold too, where I wanted something that I don't want the, the board to tarnish. Um, via process, you want your, your via is tented, plugged, or not covered. And this is about the weight of the copper or the thickness of the copper on the board. And standard for most boards is one ounce copper. Now it's just a matter of choosing your shipping method. Choose whatever shipping method you want, and then save it to the cart. Then it's just a simple matter of putting in your information and paying for it. So if you look at the way that this one's laid out, I mean, it perfectly matches the 20 pin like the 20 m2 and the 20 x2 in the pinouts here but also if you'll notice that the 14 m2 and the 08 m2 also have exactly the same pin out if you just you know go down here four pins and that'd be the 08 m2 and go down seven pins you'd have the 14 m2 so this particular board will work with any of those so this here this here is always going to be the receive data. This here is always going to be the transmit data. All these pins down here, uh, you know, they're different. They're signed differently on the different chips. You just have to look them up so that when you write your program, you know where to expect uh, each of the I.O. pins to come on, on the socket here. But other than that, it's the same basic layout for all those chips. So this one board can work with any of one of those four chips. Looking here, what I've done with these headers here. So on both sides, I have uh, the I.O. pins coming out. And then I have an equal number of pins connected to VCC and then to ground on both sides. So this way it makes it easy to connect up those three terminal modules or sensors or actuators, whatever you want to call them. I guess they're all modules. Some of them are sensors and some of them are actuators. And this board here can supply power to them and receive the data from them. I call these SVG connectors, signal, voltage, and ground. And you'll notice that a lot of the commercially available modules come exactly that way. So let's, uh, let's pop over now and have a look at the, the layout. So this is what I came up with the layout. It's going to be 100 millimeters by 62. So it's a, a fairly large board compared to what we've had made up before. Nice thing about it is it, it'll handle well. It's something that you're going to want to use on a regular basis to uh, help you design and put together circuits with pickaxe microcontrollers. So it's, it's got that handleability size. So it's, a, you know, 100 millimeters is about four inches and it got about three inches this way. So it's, it's nice, easily handled. We have up here, we have our connector for our AXC027 cable or programming cable. We have the power in here for the wall wart. We have the five volts in here and then the power selector jumper there. This is our reset switch and our headers over here. So the inner ones again are the I.O. and then you've got VCC and then ground. And if we turn off a couple of the layers here, you can get see more clearly what I've done. So here for the regulator, on the top side, the whole thing is a ground plane. So you're going to get a very good thermal conductivity throughout all of this as far as it'll go. You'll get about a square inch or a square inch and a half of it will be a good radiator for the heat coming off the regulator. And if you look here, I've done a keep out here for the solder mask so that it's a, it'd be a direct connection between the device and the copper layer. And I've put in here a hundred or so vias to the bottom of the board. Here we have another square inch or so, maybe a bit more than a square inch of copper down here as well, which will provide roughly twice the cooling as just having the copper on the one side. We made all the traces, uh, you know, power traces are nice and big and fat so that the resistance between di different devices is minimized. Most of the traces, the signal traces are on this side of the board. 
we can go up to the top here and we can see that on the top we have a couple of traces so this is this is the power to the pickaxe itself and that's the one that comes from our reset transistor here and that's it so everything is all laid out and i've made up the gerber files for this and i've sent them off to pcb way so when we get these in uh, we're going to put it together and uh, i'll show you how to set up circuits the next thing in this series will be to create another module at least or maybe two more modules and then we'll put together a design of our own and we'll have a purpose-built pc board for that design built up we're going to take you through this whole modular design process and you can see how in intuitive and sensible it is all right folks thanks for coming out today and thanks again to PCBWay for making all this possible. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.